so I'm just getting today's video ready. So let's see how many adverts YouTube have automatically put in my video. <sighs> All these lines are the auto adverts they put in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And I put five in. So let's take them out. There you go, they're all done. And now we have to place them. I normally just shove them where there's a gap. I know that a lot of people be like, oh, let's see what's around the corner. And then it's like, add, I'm never that organized. Okay, I actually do need to leave because it's my niece's birthday today. She is four. How is that possible? I need to paint these. Oh. Got my smaller pair of hoops on from the set I got. I don't feel like I need this on yet. I'm too hot. What am I forgetting? Keys. I've got deodorant on. I've brushed my teeth. I've got fresh knickers on. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> Somebody stab me. My favorite totes, Such and Beck. My mum's bringing her present. I've got her card. And you guys, come on. breakfast I have a wrap with Biscoff crunchy Biscoff spread <laughs> and banana I mean if I could have been bothered I would have got out my pan and just like lightly toasted it on both sides to make the wrap less hard work 77k and look new achievement 75,000 it's like keep up 77,000 now I think my highest ever was 76 something that was a few years ago and then I started losing so obviously we've kicked up back to that again and now we're over so we're the highest I've ever been in 15 years this t-shirt is really too small okay I'm gonna eat my breakfast oh this lamp looks really cute I'm really liking it and look we have clean floor apart from my pile of clothes and this area is getting there this bag here is the new bag that we have to put all our recycling in for paper and it's so annoying like what am I meant to do with that it's so big so I'm just gonna put it outside I think and just leave it there so I'm cooking some lunch, which looks grim. Um, it's pasta with mushrooms and I'm going to wilt the spinach to go in it, in the pan, in the colander, sorry. Actually, I probably want some of that water. That didn't work very well. Oh no. This pan is too small. I'm gonna treat myself and put it into a bigger pan so that it's easier to stir. Kitchen in a cupboard, kitchen in a cupboard, kitchen in a cupboard, yeah. So in here we've got mushroom, spinach, baby tomatoes. Then I'm gonna to put some soft 
cream cheese, a big dollop of that. A bit of cheese, some Italian herbs and seasoning. Gosh, a bit of salt. Do I want some caper? Let's put some capers in. Oh, oops. I freaking love bitter lemon. I also love the fact that I live alone so I can drink it straight out of the bottle. Ah! Oh my God, that thunder. thunderstorms yeah so I'm just sitting here working still well I haven't really been working for the last half an hour it's half five now mr. yeah I really hope you can hear that <laughs> I have just been struck with the notion that I want to go for a walk. So I'm, I'm even going to put some cream on, some sun cream, because the, sun, the sun's out. Shoes. Only joking. You need to come with me. <laughs> As I said last week, I'm wearing my jeans. No, I'm wearing my leggings with the pockets so that I don't have to think about carrying things. I'm going to wear my old faithfuls. I can't even be bothered to be put on socks because if I put on socks, it will just slow me down. And the the want to move will go. Just gonna put on a light layer. Phone keys. Let's go. <sighs> Bliss. I'm literally like 50 meters from my house. <laughs> And the headphones are dead, they're just there for moral support and comfort. I'm having a nice sit on this wall now because I'm listening to my body and that's a bit of a slope slash hill. So yeah. too windy to hear me. Wow. 
did you know that if you have pampas grass out the front of your house, well, it did in the 70s, 60s, it means you were swingers. So, good to know. There's nothing in this world that will get me outside like a cool sunshine day. Heat, no. Cold, yes. Sunshine, definitely. I mean, not all the time. Maybe this is the annual walk. But hey, it's happening and it's great. You know what's interesting about my mm, internal monologue during that walk? It's like, I kept saying to myself, pull your stomach muscles in, clench your bum, walk faster, come on, walk faster. And it's like, no, that's the diet culture mindset that I used to have where everything had to be for something, for a physical gain, rather than just getting out in the sunshine, getting sun on your face and enjoying it, movement movement for no reason other than other than the movement itself so it was nice that I could see those past thoughts and be like no 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 come on we're better than that now well we're different from that now I'm not going to use some sort of like hierarchy here but we've changed one of my favorite podcasts is off menu hosted by James A. Caster and Ed Gamble. And they did a live show back, when was it? I think it was this time last year at Royal Festival Hall. And I think I've, yeah, I did vlog it. I did vlog being in the queue to try and get tickets. And I was like 6,000th in the queue. It was fucking something ridiculous. So they had some tickets that went on sale for this Christmas time um, earlier in the year and they sold out like that. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it, just going to leave it. And they just posted a link saying last ticket release for next week. And I clicked on Royal Albert Hall. Royal Albert Hall? Royal Albert Hall, the round one. I've never been to the Royal Albert Hall. And they had tickets on Monday and tickets on Tuesday. I firstly chose Tuesday because I have counselling on Monday. But the seats, I wanted a seat on the end. I didn't want to have to sit in between two people that I didn't know. And I've never been to the venue, so I don't know how the big the seats are. And I just got a ticket. I nearly didn't go because I was like, I don't know how big the seats are. I don't want to go. It's an old venue. They're going to be small. But they're my favourite po It's my favourite podcast. I would love to... And the, our live shows just look hilarious. And yeah, off menu. It's so good. Basically, they get celebrities in to talk about their dream menu, basically. So from any point in time, from any restaurant food you've seen in films like you choose your dream starter main course side dessert drink not in that order and it's just so good and I just love firstly I'm a nosy bee so I just love hearing about what food celebrities choose like it always b blows my mind out of all the episodes there have been there have been over 200 now the fact that Claudia Winkleman chose a tuna melt as her main meal still blows my mind and I'm glad I like fought with the voice that was being like, don't book it because, yeah, because you might not fit. Da -da 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 -da. Stay inside your house. Don't live your life. I won this time, boys. I won. You know that feeling of when, oh, look, different headphones. You know that feeling when your plans get cancelled and you're like, oh, no, yeah. I'm not going to name names and I love the friend very much, very dearly, but the bed, I'm just thinking about getting into bed. The thought of not having to drive now. Oh, yes. Hydration. Ooh, hello. Oh, that feels good. <sighs> Some of you love these neighbour updates, but wait, let me pause this. I've just seen Jack and Annie, who used to live two doors that way. They moved out ages ago, but they've just pulled up in their Range Rover. You know, the ones that um, hoovered the car out when he was drinking a beer? Probably not. Maybe they're here to like collect post or something. She's got a bit darker with her hair. To be honest, I literally just saw them go across the road. 
So I'm going to need to pay attention to see them run back. They haven't lived here for like a year. So let's do a little neighbour update. Mr and Mrs Creepy Santa still live there. Even though I'm going to try and call them Mr and Mrs Santa now because Creepy Santa sounds a bit rude because they're really lovely. I know their real names now and because I know their real names, I've brought some humanity to them rather than just Mr and Mrs Creepy Santa. Yeah, and last year, I think it was, uh, I saw a guy steal one of the, a parcel from their step. So I was just sitting there on my desk when my desk was in the window. So then I had to go and knock later on and speak to Mr. Santa. And I was like, I saw a guy steal your parcel. And he was like, oh my God, I just thought they just didn't deliver it. I was like, no, I saw it. Anyway, so that was how I kind of got to know him. I haven't seen them both to talk to for about a year. It's a long time. I don't really know why. We just haven't, we just haven't crossed bar paths. But the other day I was parking and Mrs. Santa was driving along and all I, oh, you know, when it's like wind, windscreen next to windscreen, it was like bright early sun. I couldn't really see her. And I just saw her like, <laughs> like waving at me through the window, which was really sweet. Yeah, but obviously it's nearly, it's October now. So hopefully we're going to get some creepy decorations. Oh, I thought they'd left then. Uh, for any of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I've got neighbours that live opposite me upstairs and at Christmas time they have a full size mannequin. Actually no, they have a full size mannequin that they dress up for different seasons. They dress it up as a bunny for Easter, which is horrifying, um, and a full size Santa for Christmas. And it's when I first saw it, it scared the freaking life out of me because I was like, what is that in the window? Um, once I caught them actually undressing it, which was very inappropriate. I've realised that there is a Japanese knotweed van outside their old house. And there's a sold sign up, which was not there a couple of days ago. So even though they were trying to sell their house about a year ago, maybe they didn't manage it. Maybe there he is. There's Jack. Also, there's Annie. Okay, I will also add that Jack and Annie are not their real names. They're just named I named them because I thought that's what they looked like. Behind this house is a railway line. Luckily, I never hear the trains. The only thing I ever hear from the trains or feel from the trains is at quarter to 11 every night, the house shakes. Because <laughs> there's like a massive freight train or something that goes past. So if ever the house shakes, I'm still awake. I'm like, oh, it's bedtime. I know that we've got Japanese knotweed because when the landlord that used to own this house was trying to sell it, it fell through at the last hurdle because of it. Because yeah, Japanese not weed. It ruins lives. So basically, I'm gonna go on now and try and find their house. Because you know, what is a day job? <laughs> Someone said the other day, you seem very rich. Um, what do you, how do you afford this lifestyle? I'm like, dear, I work all day, for seven days a week, most nights doing YouTube. I film around on my job, I film around my work. I wish I was rich. Actually, no, do I? I wish money wasn't a worry. I don't understand it when people have armchairs in the bathroom. It's like, are you really showing off that you've got that much space? You need to put a friggin' armchair. Who's gonna sit in that armchair in the bathroom? Someone's gonna watch you having a bath. I mean, I'm just jealous that I don't have space for an armchair in my bathroom. Okay, I found it. Oh, two bedroom flat, downstairs, over half a million, 525. Okay, stop being a nosy Nelly and get back to work, okay. woke it up with really itchy art uh, wow really itchy eyes today i've put eye drops in that's why they're a bit extra juicy oh they're like slugs uh. oh they're so weird <laughs> oh that feels nice though <laughs> digga, digga, digga. oh lovely <laughs> hey Google, half an hour timer. Now I'm going to do a little early morning edit. So it's about two hours later now. Obviously I only had them on for half an hour, but I think it's quite good. I mean, I know, I know I am blessed with my skin. I'm blessed and, uh, I have a couple of spots. 
at the moment. But I'm not complaining. Zero. Zero complaints from me. Mm -hmm. Is it much better than it's the just, mobile um, phone ones, yeah? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Yeah. Is it, is it a very good one, yours? It's very good, yeah. Let me see how it comes out then. It doesn't look very good on the camera because it's. Because you can see, look. Wait, you can see on a little screen. You can see yourself. Yeah, I look a bit like a, a failed scientist. <laughs> If that's what he is, he says it sometimes, and other times he says we're just quote seeing each other. He's asked before if he can see other people, which I've said I'm not comfortable with. He's since agreed not to see other people and says he hasn't been with anyone since our first date. But the last time we saw each other, he said he's still quote curious about what's out there because he wants to quote meet his person. Are they gonna let me come through? Yes. <laughs> What's your thought of the day? <laughs> my thought of the day is um You've never been in my car on the vlog. No, I don't think I have. Oh goodness that you can't get through that space. It's alright. Um my thought of the day is we've just been sharing some funny stories with one of Lauren's friends. Nikki. Nikki. Who was actually in my car last on the vlog, so Oh with Nikki. So you all know Nikki. And um <laughs> it's nice just to remember these stories that might be quite old but that make you laugh that's what I'm getting at funny stories or mischievous yeah one was mischievous and one was just well they were both mischievous because you may look like butter wouldn't melt yeah but I get I must get it from somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it's not my no it's a yeah it's a massive my dad's also the similar he's also similar he's got the more he's got the more I don't know you're mischievous, but Dad's a bit more evil than you, I would say, with his humour. Oh, yes. Evil's, evil's not the right word. What's the word? Sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. And as, and as you would say, Lauren laughs at things that are not funny. Mm. Yeah, but when we were dating, he made me cry on a date. <laughs> as my dad. <laughs> yeah. Now, I would never make someone cry on a date. Well, you obviously didn't mind it because I'm here. I know, but it, I can't even remember why I cried. Yeah, but let's say what you did on the first date because you thought you were cool. What did I do on the first date? You had chewing gum in your mouth and you spat it out into a bush. <laughs> I spat it into the road, not into a bush, yeah. So you and, didn't put it in the bin like a lady. It's pretty, pretty... Uh, you know, I never would never do that now. Never do that now. I mean, Definitely I don't think not. you ever have chewing gum now. I mean, I was really, really young, but um, and he said to me, "I've never seen a girl do that before." <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I think he meant it as a. I just think he meant it like he'd never seen a girl do that before. But you know, that's his. Oh wait, wait, wait I'm, I'm not dropping you. Um, I, where I don't have to climb a fence. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Okay, turn around, go round. Turn oh. around. Yeah. yeah, I'll turn around and I'll meet you there. Mm. Okay, run. run. I'm not going to run. <laughs> we can show the people our, my library books, my secret library book. <laughs> we can show the people. Turn around. I just dropped mum at the library because she's collecting a couple of books. Because tomorrow she's going on holiday for 12 days. And I'm taking them to the airport in the morning actually afternoon for once they haven't got a midnight flight or a 4 a.m. flight let me show you something so we're currently in New Barnet and over there where those green gates are that used to be my secondary school it's now um, it's now a Jewish school actually it's been bought it was bought a few years ago but this alley <laughs> was the quick way towards the walk home but all the cool kids used to stand up this alley and you would never want to walk it because you'd just get shouted at or awful awful yeah it just wasn't nice because you wouldn't want to be like bullied <laughs> this is awful um yeah because we would have to walk across there and then across the park or down there and then that way home the way we've just driven but yeah Oh, yeah, because all the cool kids just used to be smoking there. 
and um, being generally awful humans. One of those kids now is in prison. This was my secondary school upper site. So secondary school is between the ages of what? Seven, um, year seven, which is 11 until six, 16, 18, depending on if you do um, A-levels. Yeah, so we had, we, it was actually really quite cool the way it was at my school. So we had the lower site, which also has been bashed down and well, it's been rebuilt, but it's it's nothing like what it was. Um, that was from years seven to 10. And then when you finished year 10, you came here because that was just like over there. Then when you, yeah, when you finished that, you came here. So it was a real feeling of like growing up and like being an adult because you, you didn't have any young years around you. So that was really nice. I was still bullied every day, but it was, it was, <laughs> it was nice. So this was year 11, 12, 13. So you have one year of GCSEs and then two years of A-levels if you wanted to go on and do them. I think I... Did I do an extra year? I think I did an extra year because I retook my A-levels because I was terrible at them. Well, I wasn't terrible at them, I just could never concentrate. Yeah, I failed psychology A-level, but then I did art and photography and those I passed because I just really struggled and I didn't understand why. Now we've got a possible ADHD diagnosis, but it was all just unknown then. And my sociology teacher looked like the guy, uh, the Monopoly man. Once he, he was walking with all these textbooks and he was really short and he just like had the big moustache and he tripped and he like fell onto his knees and then his head like smashed into these textbooks. And I know it's not funny, like as an adult, thinking about that in front of loads of kids, it would have just been like the most mortifying thing, but it was just so funny. It's not funny now. Well, no, it was. It, now it's still funny. What was his name? He was Australian. Was he Australian? God, my memory's terrible. Charlie, what was his name? He was a psychology teacher. Sociology? Sociology. Oh, my God, I can't even remember. Just tried to block out the whole school time in my life. <laughs> <sighs> What's she doing in there? Writing a book? There yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> that's it I've got an extra one they're going to want to know what books you've got okay I've got two two books that are difficult to get from our library so you have to reserve them and then they get them from another library and it's by an all uh, a British I think she's actually Scottish British author um, quite yep. an interesting MC Beaton it's at the bottom her name and there's another one there. Um, yeah. So we've got Finessing Clarissa. <laughs> the School of Manners. They, they're they really groovy. Um, they're easy reading. And it's like a sort of secret sort of little thing that I have. Um, they've got silly little stories that are just easy to read without having to really use your brain. And you just go along and um, they're a little bit Mills and Booney, so I wouldn't say they're everyone cu everyone's cup of tea. Oi, oi. But um, she's an educated woman, this woman. Um, very interesting life. You she's want to read about an uneducated woman? No, what I mean is she doesn't just write about Regency life. She's, she's um, looked she's it all up. She's from Regency no, she's looked it up, and so she gets things right. Um, she's accurate with with the things that you like, for example, with the way they're dressed or the manners or, or that, all that sort of stuff. Take me home, Crispin, wailed Tom, clutching at the Earl's sleeve. The Earl shook himself free. Fah! What is this sickening smell? I was trying to bathe his forehead, said Clarissa patiently. You see, he ordered me down from the coach and asked for my jewels. Don't Look. spoil it. <laughs> Ruined it now. And then the other book I got was <laughs> this one. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I've got no idea what that's about, but it was. I, I opened it up, and there was a funny line in it. In it about uh, the her Saturday husband, night Sauvignon sisterhood. Yeah, her husband inviting people over with even without even checking with her, God and that nobody. Uh, the only one who can ever put things in the dishwasher is her. Sounds like your household. Well, with yeah, Dad. Um, <laughs> Julie Cooper says, "God, she's funny." Great. I do love a reading this is... book. 
Oh, here she goes. <laughs> the first line I saw was, why would, why would they think you were a pedo? <laughs> Enjoy. Great. I just wanted to share something that um, most days I have about half an hour time to myself when I go to bed, I go to bed a little bit earlier now and um, I read for about half an hour and it's it's really nice. So I do get through quite a bit, quite a few books. Um, yeah, yeah, you're a fast reader as well. Yeah, I'm quite a fast reader. What book would you recommend? If somebody said, what, what name, a, name a great book, what are you saying? I've recently found a new author who I really, really like. I like it when you read the book and you feel like this person actually lived. Yeah. Um, and someone who writes like that, I think she's Irish, her name's Catherine Howard Ryan, or it might be Catherine Ryan Howard. I think it's Catherine Ryan Howard. Yeah. Not I to think, be confused with yeah. the comedian Catherine Ryan. Yeah, not to be confused with her. And this lady writes sort of like, when I say thriller, it's not thriller scary. Oh yeah, I would say, did I, have I mentioned this before? The Nowhere Man or The Nothing? No, the Nothing Man, you haven't mentioned it before. Okay, it, the first book I read of hers was The Nothing Man, The Nowhere Man. Nothing Man. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> nothing Man, is that right? Yeah, and, uh, who knows? <laughs> um, I was quite, uh, I was reading it and I thought, what am I reading? And that was a bit eerie, but very interesting. You were gripped. I was really gripped. So since then, Jeff's read it. So it's unusual that we both dad. like. He never wants to read these um these uh, these are uh, Regency scandal ones. Definitely not. But he really enjoyed that one. Um, so I would say I would recommend that one. It's something different. Mm. I've got it on my Audible list to listen to. Mm. But the narrator sounded a bit annoying, so we might have to get oh. over that. Why don't you just get the book and read it? Maybe you could just read it to yeah, me. Yeah, read it to you, yeah. <laughs> People would love you to read books to them on this. Oh. They would, they would. I think they prefer you picking weird bits out of my books <laughs> and reading them in a sarcastic way. And ruining them for yes. you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, say bye. Yeah, bye. Why is it one of the best feelings in the world when you donate clothes to the charity shop <laughs> and you get them out of your freaking car. <sighs> Such a good feeling. Those clothes have been hanging around for so long. Huh. Oh God. And also when you clear out all the crap rubbish from your car. <sighs> God. Actually, I'm gonna keep that Amazon thing because, oh, because I've got to send a parcel back. What a beautiful day. was a good good little timing thank you green light thank you universe we are back at next I need to return a parcel again. That's weird. The thing used to be there. Oh, it's here, okay. Uh, this is just returning online orders. Oh, sorry. That's right. <laughs> I don't work here. <laughs> okay, I can't do them here, so I need to take them to the till. Fingers crossed, we can do it. Yes, thank you. Yeah.
I need some new winter boots because mine, if you remember from my uh, vlog the other week, they cut my shoot my feet up so much. So I need a new pair. These are 60, 62 pounds. I like these. 48 pounds. Am I just completely out of it? Are those normal prices? I'm too used to shopping in charity shops and on Vinted. <laughs> anyway, let's go before I... Let's just go. Wow. <laughs> God. I was not... I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. I'm home now, obviously. I'm working this afternoon from here it wasn't it's not really very busy today hence why i came home um because mum and dad are getting ready for holiday and i just wanted to get out of their way and also they were talking loads and they talk over my headphones and yeah i just wanted to let them get on with it and i can get on with this so funny i think i mentioned this earlier in the week but so many people think that i don't work anyway i look a bit tanned Oh, I feel so good since taking those returns back and doing the charity shop. Oh my God. You, know, you feel like better than everyone else. <laughs> when you do a charity shop run, you're like, I've got donations. I've actually managed to get here. It's so funny. I sometimes get asked, um, there's a school near my house, which is why I'm thinking about this. I often get asked, oh, do you want kids? Or like, the assumption that I want kids and stuff. And I always thought I did. This is going incredibly deep from donations to offspring. I always used to, but that was just because we live in a society which tells women they need to become mothers and that is their one true purpose. But over the last few years, I've kind of changed my mind and I'm not sure if I do. I don't think I've ever, I've never been with somebody who I've truly wanted to have a family with and I'm so happy as I am. And just like, when I hear the screaming from the kids, I know it's like excitement and it's nice, but just the thought of having my life taken over by two school runs a day. I just can't imagine it. Like, regardless of the child itself. And I know so many of you want to have kids, and I'm not. This is my own choices, my own, you know, my own experiences here. But, oh my God, the school runs. I believe in the ability for us to change our minds, for things to ebb and flow as, you know, humans change. So who knows for the future, I don't know why I've just suddenly gone into this. It's just the screaming does my head in. <laughs> I love being an aunt. Oh yeah, I love being an aunt. And I'm gonna have a nephew. I'm gonna have a nephew. So if you've seen that, um, there's a scallop there. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have a nephew. That's bizarre. It's bizarre and it's so cool. I love to just to be able to visit and then leave. And like just imagine me with my headphones on 24 seven. Couldn't ever hear the kids. <laughs> Perfect. off. Now I'm just driving through Barnet. Leafy Barnet as you saw. I'm hungry. I'm going out for dinner. What time is it? It's three. Okay I'm not eating for another four hours. I need some food. There's a tower block there which when I was about 15, I used to hang out with these. I had two lots of friends. When I was 15, I had the good friends and the naughty friends. Charlie was always in the middle of those two groups and Amy was always in the good friend group. Funnily enough, I'm not friendly with any of the naughty friends anymore. They're all in jail. No, I'm joking. I wish they were. Anyway, once I was in that tower block and we were like, just hanging out in the t in the flats, even though none of the girls lived there, or the boy, none of them lived there. And um, 
we were going up and down in the lift. I don't know why we were going up and down in this lift. I think they thought it was cool. And I got in the lift with one of them. Let's not name names. And the lift went up quite high. And she opened the doors a bit, so the lift got stuck. And we had to have... Oh, I wasn't... Um, claustrophobic or anything I was just mortified and embarrassed that we had to have the fire brigade come out and then when they finally get like what a waste of resources anyway yeah they came down pulled the lift down got us out none of them were fit <laughs> that's not the point I'm on my way now it's hours later I've been home to mums I've been editing I've been working um, it's quarter past five and I'm on my way to collect a vintage parcel I know and I do apologize first and foremost to all the people who I've got a addicted to vintage <laughs> because it's quite a few of you um, it's quite a few of you <laughs> including the famous Nikki uh, <laughs> going out tonight I'll tell you about that later so this is a dress I'm picking up a green and white green and black plissé dress I hope it's gonna fit there you go that's good enough you can see my bum I love it when somebody wraps it up and it looks like rubbish. This looks like meat from a counter. Meat. <laughs> oh my God. I do love saving a bag. Oh, okay. It's not the color I thought it would be. Okay, so let me show you what I thought it would look like. Yeah, so that barely looks green. <laughs> Freaking neon. It's got the tag on though. Ooh, she's a devil. This might be quite cute for tonight. I mean, it's quite low in the breast area. Lucky date. It's not a date. Okay, cool. Wait. Okay, it smells nice. Back home. Do a Yui. Oh. Okay, it's time to put the dress on. Where are the shoulders? Okay, it's not clear. <laughs> Where the shoulders are meant to go. Because if I pull the shoulders up, I mean, it's a no but it's weird and that's just like gaping <laughs> okay back to the old faithful yeah okay got one earring where's the other one yes Okay, we have arrived and we found parking, which seems a bit jammy, the parking I found. But I think it's okay, because it's seven o'clock and it says we can park here till six. Well, from six. Because if you live in, oh, hello. That was a good little, nice. Okay, we need a bit of lippy. I'm five minutes early. Oh, I haven't even told you who I'm seeing. I'm going out with a female who we met, this guy's staring at me in his chips. Um, we met and went on a date before Bubble Friend and I started being official and dating. I stopped talking to this girl because it didn't seem appropriate. 
but um, we we were quite good friends. So, well, we spoke a lot. So, to be honest, I'm not sure if this is a date. I didn't think it was a date. Who knows? Right. I look good. I smell good. I've taken my meds. What more could she ask for? And I'm early. Job done. So this is the restaurant. Interesting. <clears throat> I've just realized that I didn't film at all last night. Um, I've woken up with such a headache, even though obviously I didn't drink because I drove. Um, and it was so weird waking up at mum's house because I'm like, where am I? <laughs> Why did I start filming before walking down the stairs? Oh, it's freaking 11 a.m. I, well, to be fair, I didn't sleep till like one, but that's a good ass sleep. Oh. <laughs> oh, the cats are gonna be like, we're starving. Oh, no cats. They've run away to get some food somewhere else in the world. <sighs> Look at these gorgeous sunflowers. And the day looks gorgeous. So, we're gonna make a coffee. <sighs> oh, that sun is good. So since mum and dad um, upgraded their kitchen, they've got like white here now. Dad painted the cupboard handles. They've got this crazy extractor fan and this new hob. They also have um, a hot water tap, which is like bliss. <laughs> so fancy, so, so fancy. So all you do is did it hot water baby. Who has bought smooth orange? Ah error. You know what's something I've got in my head? Let's call me whenever you're lonely. Mm. Oh, amazing. Oh. I'm sitting here editing and I've filled up this empty bottle with a vitamin C drink to get some hydration hydration in me. Uh, <sighs> it's such a beautiful day today. She says sitting here with the <laughs> with the blinds basically shut. Oh, I should definitely go and sit outside and get some sun on my face. But I'm sitting in here literally watching the Christmas movie channel. I just love the, f I just love a terrible Hallmark movie. And because, as you know, I don't have a TV. Oh, what's happening here? She looks like she's making a potion. So I know you're technically still working, but I just really want to celebrate your new Christmas scent. I know, it's, it's perfect timing. It's just cooling. Great, I'm going to celebrate. Okay, yes. I really want to celebrate your new Christmas scent. Said no one ever. Mm. Let's go by the fire. Okay. Let's go by the fire. I mean, I'm jealous. I think my robust masculinity might drown out the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Please say it's disgusting. Please say it's disgusting. It's sweet. With a hint of cool. That's the part you inspired. 
when you were the silversmith, you said that bayberry and silver reminded you of Christmas. And so it inspired me to mix bayberry with a cool metallic edge. You could be pretending like I don't love it. <laughs> Gonna get my hands stuck. <laughs> oh no! These are so good. Wow, it's so dark, you can't even see me. See, it's not even light yet. And <laughs> so it's 6.55, 6.55 a.m. And the freaking <laughs> postman just knocked. I mean, yes, it's for a parcel for me. But I was like, you're early. <laughs> he was like, yeah, they send us out at this time. I, I was asleep. And I like heard the doorbell like in my sleep. And mum and dad have a doorbell that sounds like a bird. And I was like, am I dreaming? That is so weird. Oh, that's one way to wake up on a Monday. I've literally just been sitting here for like the last five minutes, like, what the hell's just happened? <laughs> Let's go and make a coffee. Hey, gorgeous. Even the cats are asleep. <laughs> oh. You being a good god man. I think the real moral of this story is don't go to bed at 1.30 at night. 1.30 in the morning on a Sunday slash Monday night. <laughs> if I'd have gone to bed at a normal time. This wouldn't have affected me. Oh my goodness. He's an old man. Look at the sights. I'm watching a uh, Japa, uh, Japan Ninja Warrior. He's getting no younger, but he is getting better. He's appeared in 16 Ninja Warrior tournaments. <laughs> this is so funny. I haven't watched Ninja Warrior in so long. She doesn't like being held at. Sorry. You love me really, because no one else is gonna feed you. Why does cat food stink so much? There you go. Their toaster has this really cool feature that when it's on, you can pull it up to see how brown it is and it doesn't turn off the, the round. So you don't have to stop it, check it and then put it on again. So yeah, let's get in there, nearly. Way. Mm. So tonight is the night that I am going to the Royal, why do I keep wanting to say Royal Festival Hall? Royal Albert Hall for the first time and I'm just sitting here worrying about it. Doors open at 6.45, so I need to get there, find parking somewhere. I just did my nails, lilac. This is my mum's colour, I stole it. Uh, yeah, and I'm just like, what if, what if this, what if that? It's because I haven't been to the venue before and it's the unknown things, but I'm just like, why did I? You know when you have, when you book something and you normally have like months to get used to the fact that you're gonna go, that hasn't happened here, obviously, because I booked the ticket last. Wednesday, Thursday, so I've had less than a week to like get my head around it. I actually looked at the seat size after, I don't know if I mentioned this, if I do, cut. The seat sizes are all different over the Royal Albert Hall. And the one where I'm sitting, it's obviously the smallest. 
And the seat size is 40, 42 centimeters, which I, I would love to know the size of the average bum in the UK, just for personal reasons. No, for the seat size, because there's the 41 centimeters, that's 10 centimeters, yeah? What's that? I mean, you can't really tell how big that is. That's less, that's less than a keyboard. It's less than the freaking keyboard. So I messaged them uh, because it says there's a thing and um, there's a contact. And he was like, there are different options that we can help you with, which I was really impressed at their, their level of response to me because I was so embarrassed about it, really, like truly embarrassed. And he was like, the seats that I'm sitting in, in like the grand tier or something it's called, are, aren't fixed. So they can swap it for a chair with no arms, which is great. Um, and he said, and if that's not, if that's not suitable, there are some other chairs that twist around that you can be located to. So I was like, no, the chair with no arms will be absolutely great. I've got an end chair. And he said he's requested, I was like, do I need to book it? He said he's requested it. But if it's not there, just speak to one of the stewards or something. So praise be, come on universe, do this for me. I don't want any embarrassment. It's already awful enough going to a venue. And these, you know, it's it's such a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because because life in 2023 is better than it maybe used to be a couple of years ago, but life does not cater for large bodies. It just doesn't. That makes people in larger bodies not want to go out as much and not want to live their life. And therefore, I mean, I'm speaking for myself here. I'm massively stereotyping everybody in a larger body. But for me, let's say this, for me... It makes me not even want to think about going to the uh, going to the um, going to the theatre. There's actually I've just remembered. There's an amazing new uh, Instagram, the Fat Friendly Seat. They're on Instagram, and they uh, our mission is simple: give fat people the info they need to access the arts without damaging their bodies. So, if you want to know about some venues, Fat Friendly Seat the fat friendly seat so i'm just gonna sit here carry on with my work and worry all afternoon till i get there and because i worry i don't drink and then i don't eat and then i get even worse hyd dehydrated and yeah anyone else i know i'm smiling but it's i just put my knickers on back to front and <laughs> frazzled so I don't know why I've just put a green and green combo on. Oh my God, no. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> but it wasn't this. Hello. No. Okay, this isn't, this isn't time for a fashion shoot. Here we are. I can't believe that I've been in London for 37 years, lived in London, and I've never been here. It just shows how much I limit my life, I think. Yeah, I'm just waiting for my door to open, which is in half an hour. I was really proud of myself earlier because I kind of like breathed away my panic attack that I was kind of having. Um, yeah, fingers crossed that the seat is all good and everything goes well.
I need to do a voiceover here because YouTube copyrighted the song playing, but look at that. Isn't it freaking incredible? <laughs> and yeah, I was the first one there. So firstly, we're going to try the seat. Uh, I try the seat that I was originally given and I say, oh, no, that's not going to work. No. So then I sit in the actual seat I had. And now let's have a look to see how big the actual seat was compared to my phone. Freaking tiny. Oh, I just had the nicest evening. I'll tell you about it when I get in the car because there's loads of people obviously all leaving the venue at the same time. But yeah, bear with. This is one of the reasons why I have recently realized that I could never, well, she says, never say never, cut my hair short or shave my head. It's this, this feeling of putting your hair up after a night out of it being down, it's just like, ah, uh, unmatched. <laughs> Unfreaking matched. So I'm finally home um, at mum's, so it was more of a drive. The Royal Albert Hall from me, my house, is about 15 minutes. But yeah, because I came back to Barnet, it was longer. I don't even care how bad for my face this is. Oh, that's better. Yeah, it was such a good night. It was such a good night. I was sitting there before the person came to sit next to me. I was sitting there like praying to myself, please be thin, please be thin, please be thin. <laughs> because I just didn't want to have to have somebody in a larger body next to me and us both feel awkward together. I think the guy next to me felt awkward, but who cares? Um, that's his, his issue, not mine. Uh, because I was trying to like cram myself against the wall, or like the the barrier i had like half a bum cheek on the chair and i could oh and he didn't move the whole time he didn't get up and go to the loo i didn't either so i was just really 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 fidgety so like i barely sat still like the whole time i was i i, I find it hard to sit still anyway but yeah this was making it even worse and it was really hot in there so i was like fidgety and he was probably i don't know in my head i was doing his head in but maybe that's not reality anyway uh the show was amazing so funny i'm so glad i went there were a lot of like in jokes that the guy who was the guest on the podcast didn't really get which made it funnier and yeah it's just such a great podcast so yeah this is what it's called off menu and it's just so good but it was amazing so i had like an hour to wait before the show so i posted a picture of the gig on my instagram and um halfway through i was just looking halfway through the show when it was the interval i was just looking through her messages and one of my lovely followers um who i've been speaking to her for years let's call her m because that's why her screen name starts with um and you know patient patient you know, confidentiality and all that. Uh, she messaged me and she was like, uh, waving from the other side of the thing. So I was like, oh my God, are you here? And she was like, yeah. And this was in the interval, as I said. So a lot of the people were, had gone to the loo, got drinks or whatever. So there were less people. So I was like, wave. And she, I, and she said, oh, where are you? I said, I'm sitting behind the guy in the orange t-shirt. And she said, oh, I'm in stripes. So I looked down and she was like, <laughs> and I was like, ah. And then I nearly like whacked the guy next to me in the head with my waving. So we were texting a bit and then I was like, let's say hi outside afterwards. So we said hi and it was really lovely. We had a cuddle and um, yeah, such a small world, isn't it? Such a small world. And now I'm home and I'm ready for sleep. <sighs> the other day I did this. I got home from a drive. It was Saturday night. I got home and I fell asleep here in my car. I need to stop doing it. I do it all the time. But the lights weren't on, so good night. Sleep well. Peace.